people, maybe not the wrong cat. Sandra, do you know what those mean? Um, I would guess something like figuratively is more t like paying attention, figuring it out myself. That's what I would assume from figure. I've seen the word before, but I don't Good know what it means. Good guess. Sandra is taking it. She's looking for a word here, and she's making an effort to figure out what it means. But it's not right. But I'd say good guess because that's what you need to do. Okay. Um, it, in a sense, it, it has to do with not so much figure it out in the sense of understand something, but figure in the sense of, we won't have any here, but um, this is a, in a sense of figure of a cat. It's not really a cat. It's a, it's a picture. It's a representation of a cat. Okay. So figure in the sense of a, a, a figure that you're looking at, rather than something real. Like symbolic? Mm -hmm. Symbolic. There you go. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's kind of like symbolism. Okay. So when I said, oops, when I said journey to MPC, well, I can't write in public because I know. Cynthia, can we see your paper? Can we see your paper? Because you were one of the literal ones, and I want to show them the difference between, I remember you being, yours was a literal answer. Okay? So literal means you took the word journey, your journey to MPC, and you wrote a literal answer. Here's what Cindy wrote. My journey to MPC today was very successful because I thought I was going to get traffic on my way here. Okay, this is literal, and this is perfect. This she took it literally. She said, "I'm going to talk about my trip to MPC today." Okay. This morning I woke up, woke up my partner, we both got ready, my mother was ready, I had to drop her off in Salinas, we only have one car, I drive to Marina, if I, okay? See what I'm saying? Perfect answer, but she's reading this. Literally, rather than figuratively. Does that help understand the difference between these two? Okay, good, thank you. This was a very good paper, and one of the reasons I didn't, nobody asked, so I didn't say what I wanted because it didn't matter. You could do either one, okay? So most of the people answered it figuratively, okay? So this person says, school is the hardest thing I've set my mind to. Before enrolling at MPC, I took a couple of years off school. I didn't feel the way others felt about going to class every day. Does that make sense? This person is speaking of a, and it's this word. This person is speaking of his journey. You see what I mean? So his journey wasn't really a get in the car, drive to MPC today. It's the figurative or the symbolic journey. Does that make sense? These two words. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm going over this is, right now, is because I'm going to assign you a paper today and you can choose to approach the paper assignment either way. You could write a figurative paper or a literal paper. Does that make sense? So these are two very important words in English. You keep hearing these throughout the English classes you take. And we're going to add some other words like that so that we can discuss what we're doing. Okay? So both people did both things, and both of them were correct. Okay? Um, everybody has a check at the top. which means that you got credit for this. Everybody got an A on this if you come to the end. Okay. Um, so this is just part, I do two things here. One is to kind of find out something about you and the people I don't already know and just see what your writing's like. And also to introduce you to this idea of the little green marks over here. Okay, this guy has some other stuff. We have punctuation. We have modifiers, which you'll work on in the English Center. 
what is this would mean redundant? It, yeah, it means <coughs> yourself. Good. Okay, you don't need to say it both times. Tense. What does it mean by tense? And I try to get these um, close enough. Oh, I see. Uh, he says, oops. Oh, this thing. Last year, I realized that I can't. Which, what, what, why am I saying can't say? I always try to circle close to what you're doing here. What, what does he really want to say besides can't? Can't. Couldn't. Yeah, he wants that, what's called a conditional can't. So we'll talk about that. A lot of this you don't have to worry about, oh my god, I've never heard of conditional tense, I'm going to learn that. <coughs> it's mostly going to be your ear. You know, I, I don't teach grammar by having you memorize what all these silly things are called. One of the things you're going to find is that when you're doing your stuff in the English Center and you're doing my grammar lessons in here, different, it's amazing how different grammar books call the same thing different things. So I don't worry about whether you know what it is or what it's called. I just want you to be able to know what's right and what's wrong, okay? So this is a tense issue. Um, what's CS? Anybody guess? And this is where you get your little <coughs> chart out, okay? CS, you've probably heard this in your own way, Thomas Weiss, okay? So this is how you can use this. Yeah, word missing, CS, and ideas. Okay, so when I hand papers back to you, be sure you take the time to look them over. Um, see if you are continuing. A lot of people know they have trouble with things like common spices. Then you need to work on that. And, and I will help you and the English Center. Okay, with that kind of thing. Okay, does anybody, oh, one other thing. Um, a number of people put titles, okay? A lot of people got this up at the top. A lot of people got it, whoops, this up at the top. Okay, describe your journey. For all of your papers, and this, I know that this was just a, can't put it quick, I need to put it in the so you think, you know, this isn't really a paper. This is just an in-class thing. I believe, and this again, this is what we were talking about the other day as far as academic writing. What you're moving into in your 1A, your English 2 classes, the classes that you take in your majors, is papers that aren't just something like this. Or, the, or I'm probably going to just read them. I'm going to give them back to you, and you're probably going to throw them away. Okay, that's fine. I mean, it's writing practice. It's it, in the long run, this paper won't be all that important. But other papers that you write, like we were said, that this this conversation that you're going to be having with other people throughout your college career, those papers are going to become important, and you guys need to start thinking of your writing as something other than just these little papers that we do in class and then you throw them away at some point. One day, if you go into nursing, even if you go into automotive technology, if you go into any business, you will probably be asked to write something about what you do and share it with other people, okay? So looking forward to that, I think that every piece of writing you do in college, even if it's just a 20 minute exercise, is important and that it deserves a title. Okay, so I make you put titles on all your papers. Um, so the other thing about thinking of a title, or even a short paper is, it kind of makes you refocus and say, okay, what is this thing that I just wrote? What am I gonna call this? Okay, so the, the, type, the, the prompt I gave you, this person at least had it up there in the form of a title, which is good, but actually that's not the prompt. That's just the assignment. I want your own title. What did I just write? Okay, so that's another thing to think about. You're gonna put your own, pre 
hopefully creative titles on the page that you got. Okay, if you have a question about what does this mean, I can't read your writing, I can't find this on the chart, come and ask me just before we go down to the window center or come to my office or something. But does anyone have any other questions about these papers and this kind of thing? Okay. So I think okay. Now you had you did some homework, and if people haven't handed in homework yet, you need to do it. There's really no reason to go over this because everybody's is going to be vastly different. Okay. Basically, yes, I agree that was just busy work. But I have several reasons for doing it. One is to make sure everybody has a book or has access to a book. And the other thing is to introduce you to the concept of pre-writing if you haven't already been so introduced, which I think most of you have somewhere along the way. Um, you, you know that even when I gave you that little thing on um, Tuesday, um, Here's the thing, describe <coughs> your journey to MPC. Did you do any pre-writing for that? Okay, yeah, your, your answer is no, but actually you did. And, and that's, my, that's one of the reasons that my lectures on pre-writing are very <coughs> loose, okay? I want you to see some ways of pre-writing. <coughs> the book has the chapter, but I include just the thinking that you even if you're not conscious of that. For one thing, whether you knew it or not, you kind of had to make a decision about whether you were going to write a literal answer or a figurative answer. Is she talking about my trip here this morning in the car, or is she talking about my figurative journey? How did, how did I get here? What happened in my life? Okay. So you had to make that decision. You had to decide, even subconsciously, you had to think about, okay, where am I going to start this? If, if, you, if you think about it, my journey to MPC started the day I was born. Am I going to go back that far back, right? Or am I going to just start the day I got out of high school? Am I going to start at some other point? You know what I'm saying? There were a lot of decisions that you guys had to make about this before you put that pen down. Even though you don't realize it, I consider that any kind of thinking with the papers that we're going to write from now on, any kind of discussion with me, class discussion, work with your English Center person, is a form of Anything you do, because of course this group, means, this word group means. before you write, okay? And even that little bit of the is a form of okay? So you actually did some writing on Tuesday. Okay, another form of pre-writing, and then you have, you have the chapter that, we, that had all those different kinds and I had to do two of the exercises, okay? So that introduced some other kinds of pre-writing. Making a list works for some people, the, the pre-writing works for some people. I'm going to have you keep a journal in this class, as you know. Um, I don't specifically, some teachers specifically use your journal to, as a form of pre-writing, they have you write a journal entry and then take that turn it into a paper. You may, be, you may be able to do that with some of the journal topics, but mine aren't specifically designed that way. What I do have for your pre-writing, for every paper you do, I am a student. So in that other classroom, this was this one. So I keep turning that one. They put it in upside down. Okay. For every paper, and this is the assignment of the first paper in this class, you will receive a worksheet. Okay. If you're not in class on the day this is given out, you get it from the website. And completing this worksheet is required for each one. Okay, so first 
directions, okay? This seems like a really obvious thing since you've been told that, you know, since day one, but it's amazing how many students do not read the directions. Okay.
notice how those things are getting bigger? Okay, you're only writing a paragraph. So when you choose something, you don't want to necessarily choose your trip to Disneyland. That's, you're not going to be able to fit that in a paragraph. Okay, so choosing what you're going to write about is going to be part of the decision that you have to make. Okay? Um, be sure your paragraph contains a dominant impression. This is what you're going to read about in your homework. And a subjective description. Okay? You're thinking, what the hell is that? I've never heard of that before. Okay? These are going to be in your reading. And I put your quotation for yet. So we're going to go over these now. I'm giving this to you real quick because you guys, like I said, we're going to the English Center today. I want, to, I want you to have this assignment. We're going to come back and work on it next week. If you, have, if you want to look into this farther than the rest of the classes, send me an email over the weekend. Okay. Um, your paragraph must be, okay, sensory images and here's this word again. and no more than 11 sentences long. From your high school, what do you remember your teacher saying about how long a paragraph was supposed to be? How many sentences? Five? Anybody else? I always feel like when I do this, I'm always like an auctioneer. I'm calling for another number. Usually I get a range of numbers, five sentences, ten sentences, eight sentences. There really is no rule. There's no rule saying how long a paragraph should be. It depends on the piece of writing. Some paragraphs in, in areas of books are pages and pages long. Okay, some are just one sentence. Some are just one word. So there's really no hard and fast rule about how long a paragraph has to be. What a paragraph does have to have is a topic sentence that states, as this calls a dominant impression, if you describe this, this pen, what are you saying about this pen? Is this pen pretty? Is it ugly? Is it useful? Is it, does it not work? Do you like it? Do you not like it? That's what this is. Paragraph has to have some kind of dominant impression, some kind of support for that statement, and a conclusion if you wish to know what we're talking about. Concluding sentences and paragraphs. <coughs> okay, um, this gets into our process. This is, this is not only an introduction to your first assignment, your first writing assignment, it's an introduction to the way this class is going to work. When you turn this paper in, like I said, I'm going to set it up to turn, actually turn it in online, which I have never done before. I'm going to ask you guys to help me. Um, you guys are my guinea pigs. You're going to help me with that, how to do that. What works and what doesn't. Um, but whether you turn it in online or on paper, you have to attach what I call the backup work. Okay, so again, I want to see that you went through this process. You have to attach this thing completed, you have to have it reviewed, and you have to attach proof of that review, and you have to edit it. You have to proof that you edit it, and you have to attach proof of that edit. Okay. And all that stuff is going to be a handout. So you're going to have your rough drafts, this worksheet, peer review sheet, and self sheet. So we'll work through all that. This first paper is going to go real quickly, partly because it is just a paragraph. But it's all, like I said, it's going to be an introduction to this process and all this stuff you have to do. Again, I cannot get through this class by saying, OK, this paper is due in a week and a half. So on the day before it's due, I'm going to sit down and type it up. That's not going to be this class. You have to show me that you've been this process. OK, so choose a topic. So in this textbook, we're going to look at what pages are in here. Um, 
we're going to look at a chapter, and the, all of the chapters in this book are similar. Okay. There, this one's called, the chapter's called The Descriptive Essay. It starts out with a little introduction. Um, then, Um, then it starts out, it, here's the part that you need to read that talks about all these things. Okay, what, what's a dominant impression? Okay. Then, it, within this chapter called the descriptive essay, it has a part called writing the descriptive paragraph. So that's what we're going to start with the first two times. Okay. Um, at the end of this, of each of these chapters about these different writing modes, there is always um, a list of possible topics. You can, in, in the case of all of these papers, you know what the other thing is about this thing? The other one didn't actually have a point on it. Okay, you can choose one of these topics, or you can choose something of your own. But I will say, sometimes when we look at these ones they have here, um, some of these are a little bit big. I don't know whether you want to try to describe the attack on Pearl Harvey in one paragraph. Okay, yeah, that's a that's a good word. Okay. So you want to, one of the things we want to work on here is your focus. How am I focusing? How am I choosing my topic for what I have to do? If you have to write a a 30-page paper, then yeah, maybe the first marker is going to work, but not for a single paragraph, okay? Um, an office, a restaurant, yeah, describe a restaurant you've been to, um, describe an interesting professor at your school, just to say, a lot of people have done, have taken this one, I this person interesting, and a number of people describe it. These are just ideas. Again, you can choose something really funny. You can choose your desk that you're sitting on. You can choose your, your car, okay? Does that make sense to people out there? <coughs> Here's something about this assignment that you might think of. Because I'm saying describe a place and an event, a thing, or a person, you guys already have in your hands a piece of pre-writing. Remember what my purposely, what my journal, what I mean, what my essay topic was. That word was really important. This is this is a possible first draft of this paper. So if you want to take this paper, this is an end point, right? If you want to take this paper and focus it a little bit, pass it up a little bit, add to it, subtract from it. If you're already started on it, you know what I'm saying? That's one of the reasons I did that. Does that make sense to people, what we're doing? Okay. So that's what I want to do today before we go to the, we're supposed to be down there at 11. So in the next, ten, um, let's see, I'll say within the next, because uh, what I want to do is not, not give you a break. So maybe the next five minutes or so, um, no, the next ten minutes or so, I'm going to, I'm telling time, um, I'm going to go over this worksheet, then you're going to get a ten minute break, and on that break, you want to head down to the English Center, okay? And then we'll be down there the rest of the time. Take your stuff with you, because we won't come back here, okay? You need to be there. Even if you have already sat, taken the real one before, you've already sat through there, you need to go down there, we need to, if, if you have, some people I know, I, I think some people in this class have already done the real one lab, if that's you, we need to talk to them about an alternative to the lab this semester. So don't just say, oh, I've already done that, I don't have to go. Okay. Um, 
Choose it. So here's the way this worksheet works. Choose a topic. Now, if you write a topic down here, and then you start writing about that, and you decide, you know, gee, that was kind of interesting. I was kind of saying, I could describe this pen. I want to try that. Okay? But you're thinking, but this isn't working for me. What's going to happen if you turn a paper in on another topic from what's what you have here? Is that a problem? This is, this is one of the things that this class is very important, is the writing process. You will very often start a paper on one topic and then decide to change it. The question in college is going to be, OK, I have this paper. I've been wrestling with it. It's due, now it's due in a, in a couple of days, and I'm not happy with this graph. Do I completely change my topic now and start over again, or do I just go with what I've got because I have to turn it in? So that's one of the things that's going to happen in this class and that we're going to work with. Okay? But you will have had feedback on it. You will continue to get feedback on it. You can decide whether to make that decision, because that happens. That definitely happens. <coughs> so just because you write a topic down here, if you decide to change it, you don't have to. You can get another one if you want. But I still want you to turn this one in. I want to see that. I want to see your decisions and, and if you change your mind. Okay? Here's a place to, again, this is what ties in with our homework. Do some kind of pre writing here. Okay? Use the, the pre writing. If you like those cubes, you can use cubes. Um, you can use the listing. Just show me that you've done for the sake of form. I'm giving you space to do something like reassociation, whatever. Okay. So if one of the things about these worksheets is if you read all these directions and do them, I'm not going to have any trouble. Now, select the number of the ideas you came up with in your pre-writing to use as supporting details. So if we look at this homework that you guys just turned in, and I'm just going to pick somebody's homework. Good, here's a perfect one. Off the top here. So say that this person decides to write about, she's going to describe a vacation. Okay. She has Hawaii, Paris, sun, sand, sleeping, clear water, relaxing, dancing, hotels, pools, and ocean. Is she going to be able to write about all of this stuff in one paragraph? No. So what this, what this step on the worksheet is asking you to do is go in and say, OK, it looks like most of this stuff sounds like Hawaii. Okay, So I think I'm going to pick Hawaii. I'm going to describe. Maybe I'm going to pick things you want to describe. This sounds like something I'm going to describe. Okay. Um, I want to describe the hotel I stayed in. And this could be one thing, okay? There's nothing magic about the number three, but you'll find that in academic writing, things often break down into a three-part paper or a five-part paper. It's kind of interesting how that works. So I would say to focus this, she might write about her vacation in Hawaii, and what she's going to choose to describe is the sun and sand, the clear water, and the water. So you're going to say, she can't do all that stuff. That's just pre-writing. So that's what this is asking her. Now, what do these details say about her? Okay, it's going to be a different thing. It's going to be a different paper <coughs> if you write about those three things than it is if you write about sleeping, relaxing, and pools. Right? If she had circled those three things, that's going to be a whole different discussion. Sleeping, relaxing, and laying out of the pool is a little different from the description of these other things. Okay? And again, you can change this. You might decide the other three go together better. Okay. 
formulated topic sentence. Now this is getting a little ahead of yourself because by the time you get to do this, I'm hoping you'll have read the assignment in the book and understand what this means exactly. The topic sentence is going to be where the rest of your paper flows from. If she chooses to do sun and sand, the water and the hotel, she can't then suddenly, oh, here's the ocean bit. This one goes in here. She can't then um, suddenly start to describe the volcano and the, you know, whatever else. Okay? She needs to stick with what she's doing. And that's going to be your topic sentence. Is this so far, so, I know some people think, yeah, yeah, I know all this. Does this pretty much sound familiar to people? Again, it probably should. If it, if it doesn't, if the exact words I'm saying, I'm thinking, uh-oh, I'm way behind. Like I said, you showed in your, somehow in your assessment that landed you in this class, you have some idea of this, that you have something that you can build a paragraph. Whether you knew what you were doing all this stuff or not, you showed that you can at least understand it. But we just we want to put some names on it. Okay. Then I've given you space and you don't necessarily, you know, this is old fashioned stuff, right? You <laughs> on these lines. You can do this on the computer, you can, you know, do it on your other piece of paper. But what I'm doing here, what I'm showing you here is if you are having trouble writing any of these papers, if you go back and just do each one of these things, you're going to build a paragraph, whether you know it or not, you're building a paragraph. You're going to put each one of these details, the sun and sand, the beach, whatever, into a separate sentence, okay, and start putting some details in there, okay? Does that make sense? Then, you're going, and this is something we'll talk about next week. You're going to rewrite each of those sentences, adding some sensory details and figures of language. We'll talk about what those are in the next week. And so I'm going to hand you out a, a book that is reading. It's not in your book, but it kind of goes along with you. We need that time to make. Okay, one more thing. Now, here's a whole bunch of items, and I know. It's not just students. They look at this and say, they get through filling out all these lines and say, I'm not going to do that. You need to read this because, like I said, the, the turn in, the um, specifics for turning in papers in this class in order to get a grade on them are very specific. We will walk through this. I'm just introducing this today. We'll walk through this and um, look at these next week. Here is, now this isn't on your syllabus anywhere, but this is, read this, read the little paragraph in the chapter, and then read this, and think about this in light of what we just talked about. Okay, does everybody know where we're going?